All right, Tesla and Tesla Q, what's happening? We are on FSD beta 11.4.7.3.2023.27.7. Bunch of letters and numbers after that. Nav data is 2023.20-14566. And we are heading this morning to meet a dear friend for some coffee. And we're going to engage the robot right now. Blue line, robot is engaged. For those of you that are new to full self-driving beta videos, as captivating and enthralling as they are. And we are here to present a good, honest look at this software, the good with the bad. Uh, we do not edit anything. We're not here for clicks or likes or even, believe it or not, we're not here for the money. When I say me, of course, I mean me and uh, myself and the car, the robot. Um, but I will play some awesome tunes during this drive and that will inevitably get me copyright claims. And it's awesome, YouTube's AI is really good because I get the claims within moments of this video going live, uh, which guarantees that I will never profit from this video. So there's that. So I'm not here to profit, I'm here to just give an honest take. Uh, there's already going to be a disengagement that I'm going to tell you about that I know is coming up because I disengage at it every time, and that's at the railroad tracks up here because Ego, which is the fancy AI computer -y tech name, hey honey, this girl's trying to hit us in this BMW, okay, slow down. What's great is as that woman approached me, I just hit a button here, it saved dash cam clip. So now all eight cameras have been recording. It's gonna save a clip of, of like 30 seconds before and another 30 seconds after. So I had this woman, she she came up on me real fast. Had she hit, hit me or something like that? Like, I mean, it's we'd have irrefutable proof. It's a really nice feature. You can also have it, I also have it set to record dash cam clips uh, upon honk. So if you if you honk, uh, you know, you, you get the clip automatically. But like I just did a little bit more subtly where I didn't honk at that lady. Uh, in any case, getting back to the disengagement, uh, Ego, our fancy AI name for the car, uh, doesn't recognize railroad tracks very well or at all. I, I feel like one time I thought that it did and it slowed down, but I, I, I must have just been mistaken. So I'm going to just go with it doesn't recognize them at all at this point. And that's annoying because I don't, I don't want to go over railroad tracks at like 35 miles an hour if I don't have to. Um, so here's, here's, we got our railroad crossing sign right here. You should be able to see that in the video. We are not slowing down. We can tell we're not getting the little pylon things. So here eventually I am going to disengage. And even hit the brakes a little. Now I'm gonna hit the button and send a voice report. Ego failed to recognize railroad tracks. Recurring problem, urgent problem. Ego needs to recognize and slow down for railroad tracks. Thank you. If I sound like a bit of a recording there, it's because I've said that a million times uh, to the to the engineers when I send these recordings in. They're probably sick of hearing it. Some people have speculated that things like that aren't going to be addressed in future 11 dot updates. And the V12, which is the uh, supposed end-to-end -end, uh, video in to, uh, I forget what they call compute out, um, you know, video into to processing out, uh, where they're just feeding the system that's training full self-driving beta millions and millions of hours of video clips of here's how to drive a car. Instead of explicitly coding it, this is a stop sign, so you need to stop. This is a red light, you need to stop. When it's green, you can go. Instead of coding any of that, they're just showing it videos of cars doing it properly, and it's learning like a human would. Like it's learning from those videos. Some people are speculating that when it sees cars slowing down for railroad tracks from those video clips, you know, V12 will intuitively know to slow down for railroad tracks. It makes sense. I think the, the version that Elon Musk demoed had it uh, performing like a safety maneuver for a bicyclist, and he had said they never explicitly trained it on that. So that seems more advanced to me than railroad tracks, which are static. You know, a bicyclist is very dynamic. It's moving. Anything can happen. Um, so I could see that being kind of, you know, something to check off for V12, but I don't, you know, I, I personally don't think V12 is going to be released to the beta testers for many moons. Um, as I record this, we're in November of 23. Uh, I, I would 
honestly, I wouldn't think it would come out in the year 2024. I would think, I would think, you know, you need a year. And I'm just picking a year. I, don't, I mean, I, I just don't think it's going to be ready anytime soon. So, but that's me. Definitely could be wrong. I often am. I did promise some music. Uh, let's see what we got. Oh, great song. So this is my wake up playlist. And the motif of this is, is exemplified in this song. Uh, what do you do when you get knocked down? What do you do when times are tough? So pretty uh, uneventful drive so far. The one disengagement, which was a, a planned disengagement at the railroad tracks. Ooh, this almost could be one. Uh, we drove over it. So that was roadkill. That's a perfect segue. It's almost like, wow, we had that plan. Um, roadkill is another, is a huge, I actually probably should have disengaged there just to point it out to the system. Um, you know, roadkill is just a thing that exists. It stinks, but it exists and all of us intuitively drive around, you know, dead, gross things on the ground. And FSD beta doesn't do that yet. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. So these people who have, you know, 100% disengagement free drives, I'm not saying that they don't, but I would guess that they're driving in an area that has 0% roadkill or their cars have a non 0% of roadkill on them. Um, I don't see another, maybe there's a, maybe there's a third option there that I'm not seeing. I, I haven't, you know, I'm not dying on this hill. I haven't meditated on this, but that's, it seems kind of intuitive. Um, that said, here in central Ohio, we see roadkill all the time and I constantly have to disengage to avoid it. I got lucky in that last case that we just went right over it. Ooh, there's an object in the road. Is that, no, it does not look like that was visualized. So that was a cardboard box um, I didn't check the video here till the very end but it did not look visualized to me I'm not sure if it needed to be it wasn't in our way just an observation so Dan O'Dowd if you're watching my guy don't don't jump on us for the box you can jump on us for the railroad tracks and the roadkill that's those are valid constructive complaints here is a beta tester I'm trying to give constructive criticism taking full responsibility for the system always having a hand or two on the wheel and being a monitor of the system. But in no way, shape, or form is it infallible. It is, it is far from a perfect system. We are not taking steering wheels out of this car anytime soon. My guy, Bruce. Of singers, maybe there's a, a famous one in front of us. Osmond on this license plate. You guys see that? Is that Donnie? Is that Marie? Let's go. Why oh, why oh, why oh. Did I ever leave Ohio?
that'd be fun to transpose into a guitar solo. I guarantee some creative, awesome musician has already done that. Probably tens of them. So uh, this is a good chance to talk about one of the things I just love beta for. Um, this red line right here, if we get this good on the screen, let's see, does it show up if I go and do, oh, that's not the button I meant to hit. One day I'll learn how this works. Uh, this button here. It does show the red line still, so maybe that, there we go, that shows up a little better. Uh, so I just got off the map view and went to the more simplified view. This red line is just showing traffic congestion, which we're, we're on a uh, two lane road, one way east, one way west, and this is just typical of this road. Oh wow, I just realized I'm gonna be 10 minutes late for my coffee, so we're going to send a text message to our buddy, let him know that. And since I have time, I might as well throw my watch on the charger. Um, I don't know, gas vehicles might have this option. One of the things I love about electric vehicles, so easy to just have, there's, there's plugs everywhere and it's just USB-C, boom, right in, charge the Apple Watch. Big fan of the Apple Watch Ultra. If you guys, uh, if you don't know, ask somebody. Uh, so we'll get that charging. I typically, and I've talked about this in other videos, I typically do throw it on the charger whenever I'm gonna be in the car for like more than 15 or 20 minutes for a couple reasons. One, it charges so fast. You could actually, I think I just got on at 79%. Like I got 17 more minutes in this car. I'll be close to 100 by the time we get there. At least over 90, maybe, maybe 100 is pushing it. Uh, Cause I think it, it probably has that same slow charging curve that the Teslas have. I just explained this to a family member yesterday. I'll, uh, I'll give the analogy here in a second about how these cars charge. But to finish the thought on the the uh, the Apple Watch, um, it's just very convenient to have it to have it charging when I'm sitting here. I'm not getting any steps. I'm not getting a calorie burn. So there's really no reason to be wearing it other than heart rate monitoring, which is important. I wear it. I, I wear it 23/7 basically. The only time I'm not wearing it is for the times it's in the car that is charging, or if I do need charge at home, uh, when I'm at my desk, standing or sitting at my desk, I'll throw it on the charger. But I definitely sleep in it. That's People who, if you guys have these kinds of devices, uh, you're you're really missing out if you're not sleeping in them. It, there's so much valuable data you can get on your, your health habits overnight uh, with you know with wearing uh, some sort of a device, whether it's Apple Watch or a, um, like a I don't even know Fitbit is still a thing. I know there's some certain Aura rings. Uh, big one right now is the Band, um, which I the name is escaping me. A couple good buddies love the love the Band. Um, and yeah, you get your you get your resting heart rate. You're gonna get your oxygen levels. You're gonna get information into you know your light, moderate, deep sleep, um, your HRV, and you're gonna start to build a baseline. Start to be able to compare these over time. Start to see what happens to your heart rate on nights that you don't drink alcohol versus nights that you do drink alcohol. That was actually a big uh, a big thing for me. I'd already cut a lot of alcohol out of my life, but I cut even more of it out after seeing the stats because I, I care more about my statistics than I do having a drink most nights. And uh, most nights my resting heart rate is uh, somewhere between 40 and 45. And oftentimes it'll dip below 40 when I get into a you know, perfect deep sleep. And I'm proud of that. You know, I work very hard at that. Um, on nights that I drink alcohol, no chance. It would be like north of 55, oftentimes north of 60. And that's crazy to me to see a number in this starting with a six handle when I'm used to a number starting with a four handle. So, uh, boo you alcohol. So a nice little easy right turn there. That's you know again, that's child's play for beta. Um, but getting back to that thought, it's very nice to have our devices charged up as we do. Um, and that's just another kind of you know small little benefit to electric vehicles. Not a Tesla specific thing. Uh, I, I'd imagine pretty much every you know modern electric vehicle coming out these days has has plenty of charging uh, options. Um, to expand on the thought of how charging works, uh, I'm, I heard another another creator talking about this analogy of the charging curve. And what that means is that when these, these vehicles, when the battery is depleted, you know, close to zero, it's gonna charge up, it's gonna start charging faster than it's gonna finish charging. And the analogy given was, imagine a bus with, uh, you know, big, big, big tour bus with say four doors, front, back, and each side. And uh, there's 100 people to get on the bus. You know, that represents your, your state of charge, zero to 100%. So the bus starts out at zero, starts out empty, and then all four doors open. Well, as those 100 people get on, you know, say 25 from each side are getting on and choosing seats, they're gonna fill those seats pretty quickly at first because there's there's you know, no seats taken. So the first 25 people, they're gonna get on instantly, they're gonna get a seat. The next 25 people get on pretty quickly. But as that bus starts to fill, and as our battery starts to, to fill, 
the rate at which the seats get taken or the rate at which the battery gets filled gets slows down. And so that was pretty intuitive and made a lot of sense to me thanks to whoever you know shared or stole and shared that analogy. Um, and, and then basically what, what I think what Tesla and what other people have, have stated is essentially you can count on the vehicle to take as much time uh, to go from zero to 80 as it does 80 to 100. So that first 80% and last 20% are going to take about the same amount of time, which is why when we're doing route planning, a lot of times it's planning for you to get to a supercharger at an optimal low number, 5, 10, 15%, just to zip it back up to 80 at that supercharger and head, head to the next one or head to your destination. We're not trying to go, you know, drive it from 100 to zero and back to 100, back to zero. That's, that's not the most efficient way. Um, you could do that, but it will take you longer to get to your destination ultimately. And we should be valuing time. It's the most precious thing that we have. I just realized I'm three minutes away from my coffee meeting, but I am 12 minutes away from my coffee meeting. So we are going to look at messages here. Let's see if our guy doesn't have any messages. So we're going to go text reef running late. Be there 10 minutes late. Oh no, heard me wrong. Contact not found. Let's try it one more time. Text Reef. Running late. Be there in about 12. Ah! Comment not understood. All right, here we go. These are some criticisms that uh, Tesla Q could have. It's not understanding my texts properly. Oh. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you guys. You can't criticize. It's because I'm videoing from my phone and it's on airplane mode. So whether it understood the command or not, it's, it's definitely not going to work. Um, all right, we're going to think outside the box here. We are going to go to our emergent, emerg I was going to say emergentary, is that a word? Emergency secondary, emergentary. Secondary device, while being safe, while kicking up our speed a bit. Running late, comma, be there in 10. All right, I think we've safely got our message out. And that's a wonderful thing, guys. The realities of life are that sometimes you need to send a message. Um, well, I mean, that's profound. You can think that a couple of ways. You gotta send a message. Uh, no, sometimes you just actually need to send a message. And, you know, hey, if, you, if you've never done it, God bless. It's just your, that's your thing. Um, you know, I, I don't typically text while driving or anything. I certainly don't take my hands off the wheel. But right there, I was able to safely send a message with the robot driving the car and you know, myself still monitoring, just feeling a little bit better about it than if it was a random person just, you know, sending a text message and taking their time and energies off of the monitoring of the road. Because by definition, any energies you're giving to, you know, one thing you're taking away from another. And that's uh, some life advice as well. Think about where you're spending your time. All right, let's see where we're at on our playlist. Oh my goodness, let's go. Wish I had the comp hits to sing on these videos. I'm singing in my head though, for all of you to know. Let's go Beatles. Let's go Beatles. A lot of Beatles on this playlist, guys. It's my wake up playlist. You can find it on Spotify, YouTube, all my social links, whatever. Um, it's meant to put you in a good mood. It's meant to lift you up and has a motif that after, you know, just a couple songs on shuffle, I think you'll, you'll learn the motif. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, we are in assertive mode, minimal lane changes. Honestly, we might have been in average mode to start the whole drive. I just, when I clicked it, it was it was on average, but I did click it to the left, so I might have clicked it onto average. Let's actually, yeah, I think I clicked it onto average. In any case, we're now in assertive, minimal lane changes. Um, I typically like to just go 74 in the middle lane and just never have to do anything. It's really a nice feeling, especially on long drives. Anyone that's done that, you know, got to be able to feel me on that. Um, you just you, you sit in the middle lane, 
you go, you know, respectable speed, and no one messes with you. You just drive. Cars go around you on the left to pass. Cars go around you on the right to exit. And meanwhile, full self-driving beta is doing all of the driving. It is a uh, it's a wonderfully easy way and stress-free way to drive a vehicle or pilot a vehicle, however you want to say it. Well, you see all these cars driving around me on the left. Uh, none of them were electric, I don't believe. All speeding around, zipping at close range, carrying you know, tanks of a highly compressed, highly combustible, highly flammable liquid. And uh, meanwhile, we often get criticized for being in the safest vehicle with none of that stuff. No engine in the front of the vehicle. A lot of things, I, this is something maybe, you know, a lot of people who haven't thought about, I'm going to help you realize for the first time, there's no engine in the front of this vehicle, right? There's no engine to run the car. There's a motor. So, there, But it's not in the front of the vehicle. Um, matter of fact, in the front of the vehicle, hey, Model X, nice little Model X there. Looks like a new one. Let's go. Um, in the front is just a frunk, a front trunk. So if I open my hood, there's just a, a cavity there for me to store things. I actually have a nice, uh, a nice cooler, a bag cooler that fits nicely in there perfectly. And uh, here we go. I just get over. And uh, I often use it for uh, cooled storage if I'm traveling or uh, just you know regular storage otherwise. But because of that, it's a, there's a crumple zone. So if we were to happen, God forbid, to get into an accident, um, that's going to crumple. It's going to absorb a lot of that energy, and it's not going to drive. <laughs> a gigantic engine block and all the associated parts uh, into me and my passengers. Uh, it's one of the things that it's not just Tesla, it's all electric vehicles have going for them that a lot of people just fail to realize and, and uh, you know, unfortunately the, the mainstream media does not, does not report on things like that. Not to mention the gigantic pack of batteries at the base of this vehicle, uh, keeping us low to the ground, making these vehicles very, very, very hard to flip and uh, just adding to the, to the safety features. All right, we're four minutes from coffee, so we're gonna wrap this thing up shortly, but this is a fun one. So the vehicle just took the exit. I'm not doing anything if you've been watching. Um, pretty cool, recognized. This is a kind of a dynam dynamic turn up here. I, I think it's done it before. I think we're cool, but let's take a look, and it shows some traffic. Um, what we have to do is go under this, this highway overpass. It's gotta stay left for exit six alpha. Looks like it's doing that. All right, this is going to be pretty easy, I think. That wasn't nearly as challenging as I thought. Uh, under the bridge. Say, what up, Chili Peppers? Ooh, a little confusion there, maybe? No. Started like it was going right, but it picked the correct lane. And, oh, this brings up another. Actually, I wanted to take a picture, but because I don't have my phone in my hand while I drive, I didn't do this the other day. I was driving due west at sunset, and it was brutally brutally bright in my face and uh, of course I had beta driving so I wanted to bring up how wonderful uh, that is in that scenario and it just kind of reminded me of that right there where we had the sun shining at us um, yeah sunglasses help um, you know I can put my, my visor lid down here and I did both of those things but uh, it also helped to have the you know super intelligence the robot uh, driving along with me just making us that much safer and anyone who's ever been to Columbus or heard of uh, heard of High Street, we are approaching it now. <laughs> it's gonna be funny. This guy's gonna get in front of me. This GMC, you got around me right there. I can I can just I have like a sixth sense for these things. I still feel it. I still feel like he's gonna get get it cut, cut us off. I mean, it's like unbelievable. You're not putting your signal on. What are you doing? Uh, well, decided to go straight. He proved me wrong. Proved me wrong. Look at that. Can be wrong. Often I am. The way he was riding me, it just definitely felt like a cutoff. Anyway, made our turn. We are on the infamous High Street, a bit north of the, the crazy, crazy, super popular, super famous High Street, uh, where you will find the Ohio State University Buckeye campus. That's uh, more, more up here. We are going to stop just short of that. But so far, so good. I guess disappointing, Dan uh, O'Dowd. I'm sorry, buddy. I wanted to, you know, I, I gave you the fair drive. I don't know if you'll give it a fair shake. You know, there are some things to criticize. Um, you know, the, the, 
not getting over for roadkill here. A bus has its light on, wanted to get over. I don't know. My wife and I typically try to go with the flow of traffic there and not stop because stopping create could, you know, is, is, nobody behind me is expecting it, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if we should have stopped there. The you know, ego certainly didn't. Uh, but we try to give you a fair, fair view at things and maybe one or two things to criticize here, but, you know, we don't, we don't make up how the drive goes. So if there's not a lot to criticize, there's not a lot to criticize, man. I mean, you should be happy. This goes for everybody for, for good drives like this. It means the world is a safer place for you and your loved ones. Uh, so I'll leave you with that. We are autopilot ending, so we're going to go ahead and kick it out. And I have never actually... Oh, it's on the other side of the road. Wonderful. We'll grab a spot right here on the street. And hope this bus doesn't end us. Thank you, bus. Act like you've driven a bus in the city before. All right, we are backing up. Uh, would have been a funny time to try to use auto park. That would have definitely given you guys something to criticize. And that's it. We are at our destination. Beta, you know, did pretty well. I, I can't really complain. Get our watch on. Hey, what up? I didn't realize I was on camera. Um, and we're going to go have a nice good chat with our buddy. Enjoy a cup of coffee. Talk about life and all things esoteric. I don't know. I just made that up. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the drive. Let me know if you have any questions. This is a, a beta tester's fair and honest look at full self-driving beta. Uh, software version number will be in the description and uh, is in the beginning of the video as well. Be kind. Peace out.